So when I did a 3900X 2080 Ti build, there was some guy out there in the audience, he was sweating. And I know, because that's usually not what's on the channel here, but we've got a few builds coming out that are really focusing around the new Zen 2 CPUs because they are hitting with really good value. And in this one, especially in this particular case, we've got a B450A Pro. And now the reason this motherboard is so important is because A, it's 85 bucks USD, really cheap. And you've got the BIOS flashback up the top here. So this is really easy to do. In other words, you can download the latest MSI BIOS for this motherboard, rename it to MSI.ROM, and then insert it on a USB port, put it in the motherboard without any CPU installed, press this little button uh, while the power is plugged in, and then wait about five minutes, and then you'll have your BIOS ready to go. And then you can put, in this case, we're using the 3700X, you can put that eight core 16 threaded goodness, or recently I've been messing up the cores and threads, so you can put that eight core four threaded CPU in here, and you would have some really good value for money in terms of CPU, motherboard, and the included Wraith Prism cooler, which has the RGB bling and does a good job of handling the 3700X. Now we've also got some 3600 megahertz CL18 memory. This stuff can be had for around about $100, so it represents some really good value for money too for getting the most performance out of the new Zen 2 CPUs. Then with this uh, SSD, SSDs have come down so much in price, it's ridiculous. I'd be going with a one terabyte uh, M.2 because currently they're around $110 for this exact model, which makes it just ridiculously cheap for that amount of storage on M.2. And yes, it's not PCIe NVMe, but really when it comes down to it, if, especially if you're playing games, you're not going to notice much of a difference at all. And in fact, the only time you'd really notice a difference is if you're editing like me, 4K videos day in, day out. And then again, you're probably going to have the extra budget for that extra $100 on the NVMe options. But we've also got a two terabyte here for backup because these can currently be had for around about 50 bucks, making them extremely good value for money. And then we've got the RTX 2070 Super, which is a $500 GPU, but it is coming in closer to the high-end option. And I've tested this one out. It's a pretty solid performer, the Founders Edition, and it goes really hard, especially with a Zen 2 like the 3700X. We've got a 750 watt power supply and the Bitfenix Sabre, which is their latest case that they're releasing. So we're gonna put this whole build together, which tallies up a total of around 1,350 USD, or in Australia, just a little bit over 2,000 Aussie dollars. But at this price point, I consider this pretty much the high-end build relative to most people that don't wanna go out and pay those premiums for those extra cores and all those higher-end GPUs like the 2080 Super and the 2080 Ti, because I just don't think you're going to get the price performance out of it after you start going past this level of parts. But with that aside, let's get the build montage rolling and then also put some bling inside this case and see if it can handle the heat with an RTX 2070 Super and new eight core from AMD. So we've now finished the front of the build, also the rear of the build still has to do a lot of cable management and that's I guess the problem when you're mounting uh, four RGB fans in the build, you've got all these extra wires, controllers, and it does get a little bit frustrating but what we've done here is we've used the water pump header, the uh, four pin fan header and then split that to all these fans at the back because they have the option to daisy chain from one fan to another with the actual four pin and so since this fan header here usually is double the power output of a, a normal fan header we can run essentially four fans off that without having any problems so that's a little trick that we've got there and then up the top of the case we're also going to be putting an rgb strip inside here just to give the top of the build a nice glow and to match all the rest of this rgb let's finish off this cable management and then present the build
And so here's the build complete now. It's got kind of like a funny power switch where you lift it up and it's kind of like that launch button. So it's pretty cool. And then you've got your RGB control at the top of the case, as well as mic in and headphone out jacks and your two USB 3 ports. And then of course the Sabre is the actual RGB lighting. So the name of this case is referring to this right here at the front, which works off the same controller as the fans here and the strip at the top. So this build, I gotta say with Bitphoenix, they do do aesthetics, like I guess higher end aesthetics for a decent mid-range price. So before we move into the temperature test, which I am quite worried about since this is kind of like on both sides, this is all the airflow you're getting in to your front three fans here, maybe another Enso repeat, we're gonna find out right now. But regardless of that, this build right here, it's looking really good. And as long as you're not putting too high end a component in the build itself, the temperatures should be fine. But of course the numbers do all the talking. Let's test this thing out with the glass on versus off to see what the temperatures are like. I've got the So after running through all the numbers on this build, we pretty much decided to not really overclock the system at all because we had the Wraith Prism cooler, which does an absolutely fine job on the 3700X. And I've tested this out in the past, uh, handling it with the Precision Boost Overdrive 2 out of the box. And on these settings out of the box, this CPU jumped up to 4.1 gigahertz on the B450 motherboard, the A Pro. So the motherboard's doing an absolutely fine job of handling this eight core. And it's, as we said before, you don't have to worry about it not supporting the new Zen 2 CPUs. So you can just use that BIOS flashback feature, really handy to have. And then the 3600 megahertz CL18 stuff, that worked absolutely fine on this as well. So all you have to do with this build when you get it, it's pretty much just go into the BIOS and then change the AXMP profiles to the ones of the memory manufacturer at a 3600 and then exit and save changes, jump into Windows and you're pretty much ready to play games. Now with the numbers we saw here, 1440p with the new Wolfenstein Young Blood, we were getting pretty much over 100 FPS at all times and this was on the max Uber detail settings. So the 2070 Super's definitely got a lot of juice in the tank. And I believe with this title in particular, Nvidia have implemented adaptive shading, which they claim gives an extra 15 to 20% performance boost for their new GTX Turing and RTX Turing cards. So it is pretty good to see that if you wanna build a PC to play this Wolfenstein game, then this build will be more than capable of handling it at 1440p high refresh rate settings. But another thing I noticed too was with the new Wolfenstein Youngblood was I didn't really get into it straight away as much as the previous games. I thought it was like weeaboo culture meets these two young chicks. And it sort of just is starting to go off in this tangent that's a little bit too much for me, especially the voice acting. It didn't feel as normal as the other previous installments where I much preferred the female voice acting in the previous um, franchises and because you're playing your main characters as females this time around you uh, have to pretty much listen to these chicks that sound like weeaboos all the time and I'm sort of not really it's not really my thing I'd like to choose the voice of the chick if possible that would have been making the experience a lot more and that's a weird thing because I'm not really much of an audio guy as I more prefer the visuals. And in this game in particular, the visuals are very good. The gameplay is really smooth and it actually takes a lot more skill to play this latest Wolfenstein where the enemies have different sorts of armor and you have to use different tactics to uh, get through the levels. Uh, when I first joined it, I joined someone else's server and I didn't know what was going on and I just got absolutely hammered. 
So then I created my own server and started to get into it, but it's sort of like an active game where you're leveling up. So it's a different sort of play style to the previous Wolfenstein. So it is pretty enjoyable. Just as I said before, the voice acting was a little bit off for me. Uh, that's the first thing I noticed. But other than that, this build here with the Bit Fenix Saber, uh, we've tested the Enso in the past and that really had restricted airflow at the front of the case. This time around with the case, it was, uh, I guess, decent. It's an improvement over the Enso. And one thing I did like about the Enso was the ease to build in it. And so they're using the same chassis as the Enso in this case, and you can then mount the bling at the front, the three front fans, and then we put an RGB LED strip at the top. And with that glass panel on the side, it's not tinted, so you can see all the bling coming through. And I must say, with the Sabre lights at the front and all the RGB bling installed, this thing actually looks pretty good. And coming in at 80 USD, you can then go out and get three extra fans for it, and it's going to be quite a good looking build. In terms of airflow and performance, I really wouldn't put anything over a 2070 Super. This is sort of edging into the high end territory, but when we did the temperature test, we saw a three degree lift uh, with the glass side panel on versus off in a 24C environment. So even with the glass panel on, which is most likely what you're going to want to keep your case in this configuration, the temperatures weren't so bad, at least compared to the Enso in the past, where the GPU was getting a lot hotter. Uh, the CPU temperatures as well, since we're using a top down blow style cooler with the Wraith Prism, that was about three degrees warmer, again with the glass side panel on. So leaving it on is not going to be too much of a detriment. The fans can still spin up absolutely fine and give decent airflow. Though of course there are better cases out there in terms of airflow, as we've tested the ideal scenario would be with the glass panel on, or at least the side panel on to have temperatures a little bit lower than when they would with the side panel off. So the airflow in this case could use a little bit of work, but everything else on the build, the aesthetics, the cable management room, the buttons on the front, as well as the fact that at this price tag, it includes the RGB controller in the rear of the case. So you can go out and get a three pack of fans. At least I think it's a Bit Phoenix um, RGB controller. So you can go out and get bit, three Bit Phoenix fans in the RGB strip and you can run that all off the same controller. So you don't have to get it, go out and get another controller. And even then I will say going with all this RGB, there's gonna be a lot of extra cable management on your hands. I was just shocked when I put it all together and I was ready to start doing cable management, how much extra cables there were to manage did get there in the end. And of course the extra room at the back is gonna be no problems for doing all the cable management. You'll be able to fit pretty big power supplies in this case. Uh, but as I said before, you'd kind of want to cap it out with what we've done here today, maybe an eight core and a 2070 Super. That's absolutely fine for this build right here. But lastly, looking at a build like this, if I was into building a new PC, this would be definitely something that would be on the top of my list. We got that 2070 Super coming in with not such a bad price, at least when you compare it to the higher end cards out there like an RTX 2080 Ti, where they're just getting into the ridiculously expensive territory, but you are getting high end performance. And then of course the Zen 2 CPUs, eight cores, 16 threads for 340 bucks with a really bling worthy cooler that does a decent job. This is where I would be definitely putting my money in terms of going for a new rig that can play all the latest titles at 1440p in 2019. Now in terms of punch for your dollar, we just did a build for $3,000 on the channel and we see comparing the two together that this build right here, it has pretty much better aesthetics in my opinion and that's mainly due to the Mac Cube 550 really not impressing me at all. Uh, so we've got better aesthetics here today and we've also still got really good performance. And some other things that did impress me with this build was surprisingly using that M.2 uh, SATA solution from uh, Crucial, the MX500. I bought this at the store. It was pretty much the cheapest one terabyte M.2 I could find. And it's got a little light on it, which does let me know uh, when the hard drive is being utilized. So that was really good to see, especially if you're diagnosing problems. And for instance, if there's FPS stuttering and whatnot, you can then look at that light. If that light's on while your FPS is stuttering, for example, could be a problem with your drive. So I do like that little light there, especially when you can clearly see it through the side panel. And wrapping up today's build, the 2070 Super and the 3700X, they go really well together. Uh, definitely go for this if you're looking to get high-end performance without breaking the bank too much. As well as all the other components, that 3600 CL18 memory, you can get that off Amazon, at least the Vengeance Pro stuff. 
for around about 100 USD. So that's not bad at all. It's not gonna give you any detriment to performance, at least compared to some of the Samsung BDI stuff. Yes, you will get slightly higher FPS, but you will be paying quite a bit more for that memory. And everything else in this build, especially the B450A Pro, this thing impressed me in terms of its price point and how it could handle the new Zen 2 CPU. Though one thing I did notice was the idling voltage was a little bit high. In the BIOS, it was saying 1.45-ish volts. And then when I was doing stress tests, it did max out at those voltages, but when there wasn't a load going through the CPU. So basically this means that when we put a load on it, the V droop is going down to around 1.31 volts. So it's not a problem in the long term because what you've got to look out for is when the CPU is loaded up is if the voltage is going through then, then that's the worst part. So basically when it's idling and there's no current going through it, you don't have to worry so much about the voltage uh, being this high, at least from my experience. So it is one thing that could alarm you if you get this combo, but I don't think it's anything to worry about. And at this price point, this B450 with its convenience and its features is definitely an impressive purchase. And also the last piece in this puzzle, the Bit Phoenix Sabre, it's got the aesthetics and the performance of it in terms of airflow is pretty meh, but definitely the aesthetics makes this a decent buy at $80. I definitely like this case a lot better than the Mark Cube 550 that came in there where I didn't really see the direction of that case. But in terms of this, this case here, it's going for convenience and bling and it's got the features at the front like that RGB controller included, which you can control from the top of the panel and does a good job of quickly changing the bling. Or if you want to turn it off and you don't like any RGB at all, you can just simply turn it off with a few clicks of a button. Anyway guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's build. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comments section below, would you change any of the components in today's build? I know a lot of you guys would probably go for the 5700 XT over the 2070 Super. And don't worry, I do have a 5700 XT coming up in the next week or two. So stay tuned for that one. It's definitely gonna deliver probably even better price performance than today's build. But we will have to wait and see with that one. And also you guys have requested that I put an Arctic Accelero on a 5700. So I'll be doing that too and comparing that before and after. So stay tuned for some juicy content coming up here on the channel. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.